going on guys? It's Simo. So today we're going to be posing the question, should you buy Dark Saviors? There's a lot of hype circulating around this set and that's what I wanted to cover in this video. We're going to be covering what the set contains, look at it from a financial analytical standpoint, and hopefully that brings you guys to a decision as to whether or not you want to invest in this set. But before we get into that, I want to give a huge shout out to my newest patrons as always. So big shout out today to Marco. You are the reason that this channel is growing strong. If you guys want to help support me in the channel through Patreon, then check out the Patreon link in the description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So what exactly is in Dark Saviors? Well, Dark Saviors has two brand new archetypes that are going to be introduced to the TCG, as well as a third archetype that isn't exactly new, but I guess you could say it's getting legacy support because it's had its cards around for a very long time. So let's go ahead and start with that archetype being vampires. Now, vampires are an archetype that never really took off, but never really got just a massive influx of actual support. I mean, vampires have been around since I think Dark Crisis when Vampire Lord was a seeker rare, and then every now and then you would see a vampire card thrown in a set as like a secret rare or just something like that, but the archetype never really came together. And I think that's what's really cool because this is the first set that's really gonna just give the archetype a ton of cards and really kind of set it up for success. Now, I really like this because some of the vampire cards are actually really neat in what they're capable of doing. Now, Vampire is the archetype. Basically, I mean, it kind of fits with the theme. You're going to be paying life points to get a ton of really cool effects. You're going to be using cards that are going to pay life points to give you extra summons, to give you additional cards to search out of your deck, things like that. And that's what's really neat because the cards in this set actually give vampires a lot of boosts and consistency. I mean, you're going to have cards that are going to allow you to add vampire monsters to, from your deck to hand, vampire spells and traps to deck to hand. You've got cards that allow you to give additional normal summons to your vampires. Hell, they even get a vampire infernity barrier. And anytime you give an archetype an infernity barrier, that sounds pretty damn good to me. But I think the thing I like the most about the vampire archetype is the artwork. The artwork on these cards is so badass. And realistically, it's not the best archetype, but I just love the artwork and I'm a sucker for really good artwork. So that's the thing. Wrapping that up, you know, is vampire really good? to be just the next greatest thing? Probably not. We really haven't seen any success in the OCG, but the artwork is incredible. It's extremely gothic. It's really dark, and I think that's what I like the most about it. Now, this moves us on to Fur Hire, formerly known as the Skyfang Brigade in the OCG, which I thought was a much better name than the TCG version. Skyfang Brigade, or I guess I should say Fur Hire now, are an archetype that are very reminiscent of a deck like Yosenju. Basically, the archetype is able to special summon out all of its monsters one after another because they can just special summon out another monster from the same archetype. So you're kind of just vomiting your hand onto the board with all of these different monsters. And in addition to that, each monster not only has that effect, but you're able to also get an effect from each monster if another for higher monster special summoned onto the board. And what I really like about this archetype is the effects that these monsters have are very just good generic effects that any archetype type would just love to have at its disposal. I mean, you have removal for face up and face down monsters. You've got searchability. You've got draw power. You even have disruptions in the form of monster effects and spell and trap effects. So all of the components and the tools are kind of there. And what's also neat is that the deck doesn't really have an extra deck boss monster. The boss monster actually resides in the main deck and is searchable. So that's pretty convenient. But the nice thing here is that it's very easy to access the boss monster and just get it onto the board. You have a card that can negate monster effects and you're pretty much set to go. Now, the thing about this deck is it's very weak and susceptible to not only disruption, but also to board wipes. I mean, if you get hit with like a Torrential Tribute or a Dark Hole or a Geki while you're playing this deck, if you don't have the card that can negate spell or trap effects, you're going to be in for a really hard time because you basically just lost all of your advantage. And that was one of the weaknesses of Yosenju as well, which is why I wanted to make that comparison. In terms of competitive viability, I don't think, again, this is going to be something you're going to be seeing a lot, but very similarly to Yosenju, I think it's actually a decent enough rogue deck that I could realistically see someone getting their invite at a regional, playing a deck like this with a bunch of stun cards to help slow down their opponent, then they just spam the board with a 
bunch of these for hire monsters and they're just going to be good to go. Realistically, I think that's very possible. Now, is it better than Yosenju? I, I think that's debatable, but I think if Yosenju was able to grab people invites when it was in its prime, I think this deck would be able to do the very same. Now this brings us to our last archetype, and the archetype that basically is going to sell the set, the Sky Strikers. Now the Sky Strikers are currently the strongest deck in the OCG. Obviously their format does differ from ours, but usually it's not too far off or not too long until we are going to be in line with them. Now the Sky Strikers, for those of you who don't know, are very reminiscent of Zodiac, but kind of like in a Link form rather than in an Xyz form. And they're also very spell reliant, whereas Zodiac might have been more monster reliant because because a lot of the cards in this archetype not only are exclusive to the Sky Striker archetype itself, but are actually generic and can fit into pretty much any strategy that you might want to utilize. And when you have cards like Sky Striker Engage, which allows you to search basically the entire archetype, and a card like Sky Striker Hornet Bit, which allows you to special summon a token onto the board and start going off into your link plays, very similarly to a card like Zodiac Barrage, these cards are splashable in any archetype as well well as the main deck itself and that's what makes the archetype so appealing is that it's not just relegated to one single use you have so many different uses for these cards and that's what gets people really excited now the big thing here is that this is where the money cards reside because you've got sky striker engage currently going for like 90 to 95 dollars again these prices are before the official release so expect them to come down a little bit but because that's the main searcher card that's the money card and if you pull one of these out of a booster box then you pretty much hit it big the thing here is though is that this archetype is going to be something that you really have to keep your eyes on competitively because you're going to start seeing it everywhere. It may take a little bit of time, but it won't be long before you're going to start seeing Sky Striker lists, whether they're pure or being splashed into different archetypes at the regional and the YCS level. And with YCS New Jersey right around the corner, I wouldn't be surprised if some of those decks in the top cut are playing Sky Striker cards. Now wrapping up the basically the whole rundown of what's in the set, there's also some nice staples that got reprinted like Scapegoat. Toon Table of Contents was a big one. The Sky Striker archetype does utilize this card sometimes and they've also got stuff like Allure of Darkness and Foolish Burial Goods which are getting another reprint and considering they're still you know in the three to five dollar range I think that's pretty decent. Now looking at this set financially is this something you might want to invest your money in well let's take a look at it you know because with a card like you know sky striker engage which is about 90 to 95 dollars the other big money card is sky striker widow anchor which is currently sitting at about 40 dollars and remember these are before the official release so they're going to come down a little bit but if you're looking to purchase a box for around 65 to 75 dollars i would say that's what most booster boxes sell for you have to keep in mind that these two cards Cards in particular have been confirmed to be short printed in the set. I mean, these cards are going to show up less often than all of the other secret rares, which means you're not going to get a Sky Striker engage in every single box. And that's something you really have to keep in mind, especially if you're looking at this from a financial standpoint. These have been confirmed to be about one in every two boxes, which may not seem like a lot, but think about it from a financial standpoint. Two boxes on the lower end, $65 a box, would be $130 not including tax. If in those two boxes you got one copy of Engage, that's going for about $90 to $95. You have to make up the rest in terms of the rest of the quantity in those boxes. So the fact that you still took, you know, about a $40 to $45 hit, even more than that in some instances, you know, is that really worth it to buy the booster box? Because you have to remember, for every person that pulls a Sky Striker Engage out of their booster box there's going to be another individual who does not so while it may be beneficial to buy a box and hopefully if you hit it big that's fantastic that's not going to be the case for every single person who buys a box the other big thing here is because sky striker engage is such a in-demand card people are going to be tearing apart this set in order to get their copies which means if you're someone looking forward to play for hire or the vampires this is going to benefit you 
tremendously because what's going to happen is a few weeks down the road, once people have cracked open a ton of product for this set, the prices of these cards are going to tank in comparison to where they are now. Take this for example, with a booster box sitting around $65 to $75, at the current moment, if you were to purchase a play set of every single fur hire card, you're only looking at about a little bit above the price of the booster box in general. But remember, these prices are before the set has been officially released, which means a few weeks down the road, once people have ripped open hundreds, if not thousands of boxes, there is going to be a massive overabundance of these fur hire as well as vampire cards available, which means you're only going to be paying a fraction of the price in comparison to what you might pay for a booster box. But the other thing there is that you're actually going to be getting play sets of every single card that you want. Whereas if you were to buy a booster box, you might get play sets of all the cards that come in super rare. But as for the secret rares, you're not really going to be getting play sets of those. So you're actually going to be getting what you want in comparison to hoping that you're going to get something that you're most likely not going to get. So that would be my personal recommendation. Just wait a few weeks for the prices of these cards to come down. People are going to rip open hundreds, if not thousands of these boxes. There's going to be a massive surplus of the cards available on the market, and you're going to be able to get these cards for pennies in comparison to the price. Now, even if you're looking to pick up the Sky Striker cards, I would still recommend to buy the singles over the boxes there, because yeah, if you buy a box, you might pull a copy of Engage, but if you don't get that Engage, it's not going to serve you any good, and you still have to get the remaining Sky Striker cards in addition to that. So it benefits you best to just buy the singles individually. Maybe your, some of your friends don't want them and might give you a better deal on them than they might be going for on the secondary market. So just keep that in mind. I guess the one thing there is, you know, I'm always going to recommend to you guys to purchase the singles over the boxes because it always makes more sense economically to do so. But if you are just a pack opening fiend, you love cracking open packs and maybe don't necessarily want to do it for that financial value, but also because you just love doing it just to crack packs in general, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just trying to help you save money. It might not be the best product to do that with because you might not get the most out of it. But hey, if you have fun doing it, then go for it. So guys, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Dark Saviors as a whole. And if this is something that you look forward to purchasing, whether it's singles, boxes, either way. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video helpful, consider backing me on Patreon. Because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.